Hey guys, it's Mike coming to you live from the backyard oasis. Um, tonight's a little bit more like an oasis. There has been crazy rain going on, so uh, if you see the flash of lightning uh, or hear it, hear thunder, that's what's going on. I'm under my porch. I'm safe and dry. I want to talk to you guys tonight about a cool camera that I got into wanting to shoot with and have actually never shot with it. And there's some good reasons why. So let's talk about this bad boy. This thing, I gotta back up a little because it's kind of big here. This is a Polaroid land camera 120. Um, this is a, probably made in the late 50s, early 60s range uh, land camera. Um, this is a really cool camera. It's got some, this particular model has, has a little bit of history for me personally. Um, not this actual camera, but a camera exactly like this. Uh, I believe my parents actually used a camera just like this on their honeymoon, uh, which is kind of cool. So talk to my dad a little bit about it after I got it. Um, basically, here's the breakdown on this camera. Uh, big giant clunky leather strap, big giant clunky flap here, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, shutter release right here. This one has a big number two on it. Um, so you do that. The film would slide in and out of this, this side here, this side compartment, uh, if I can get it open. So that side compartment right there, film would come out. Um, it would come out in a sheet. It would be basically the size from here over to here. Um, and just like the name, you peel it apart and you've got a positive on one side and a negative on the other. Um, and you let it develop. It's really cool technology. And actually, you can't do that anymore. So that's one of the problems with this camera is when I got into wanting to shoot with this thing, there's two things. One, I have to modify it. Uh, see if I can get this battery compartment over. So this is the battery compartment. It takes a three volt battery. You cannot buy that battery anymore. Um, if you can, it's going to be very expensive or some crap you buy on eBay from China and I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it. Um, if you're good with an X-Acto knife and a uh, soldering iron, there's instructions online where you can go and actually modify this to hold, um, put an adapter piece in here. I think there's some adapters they sell, but there's also some other ones that they modify it to hold uh, AA or AAA batteries instead of this three volt business here and does exactly what you need it to do. So one of the things, you know, back to this camera is, is you know, it's it's really cool. It's kind of nostalgic to have this big giant thing. You know, here's the here's the shutter release, and it's labeled as number three. So, you know, they took user experience to a whole nother level. This broke off the the handle here when I first got it, but these were labeled one. This one's actually labeled one, and that's what you use to open it. So you go to number one, you push these tabs up, and once you've pushed them up to clear the mechanism, you pull the lens out here, that's one. Two is to shoot, and then, uh, I'm sorry, is to uh, charge it. And then three is actually the shutter uh, cock on it. So, um, so I get to do it again, there we go. And there you go, that's how it works. Um, it's got some light and dark settings here, probably just f-stops. It doesn't actually say f-stops on them, but just as lighter and darker. Um, and then this photo cell here is um, likely part of the mechanics, or, or I'm sorry, the electronics to, to make this thing work. Um, the viewfinder, you just pull this thing up and take a view through there, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, there's really not much to it. There's no focusing on it. There's nothing like that. It's just walking around back and forth. Uh, to frame the picture and then again back to the numbers there's number four so that's where your photo comes out on that side there um, what else is cool about this 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 one specifically this model here that I have um, I got from a garage sale has a little clip clips this down um, it's got instructions in here but here's what's neat um, so if you've ever shot any kind of instant film or any other kind of film in cold conditions um, it doesn't work real well, especially instant film. So they have this little pocket warmer 
And what you do is you open this up and you slide the piece of film in there, which this is this is how big your peel apart would be, this size. You slide it in there, close it back up, and you stick it in your shirt pocket up next to your body and let your body heat warm this little aluminum plate up and your body heat will bring it up to a temperature where it'll actually develop. So I've shot some Instax, some Fujifilm Instax out in the wild on a very, very cold day. Um, I was up north in Toronto and uh, it was cold. Well, let's just say that. Um, and, and they just never would develop. So I stuck them in my shirt pocket. I, I, you know, I remembered a little old trick about doing that. It works fine. So, um, you know, back to this camera, it's, it's, it's a cool camera. It looks really neat. Um, it's so dusty. I mean, this thing collects so much dust. There's so many moving parts on it. You know, from a, um, a actual usable camera perspective, this is not a usable camera in my in my book. I, I wouldn't buy this. You you can buy the film for it. You can still get some film. I know Impossible Project, uh, last I read, was trying to actually resurrect some of the film um, processes, and they were trying to figure out how the hell to do it, and had not really been very successful uh, in creating anything that was lasting. Um, and so, but film, while well, I did that, while I was talking about that, there's a little lever. Open this up. That's the inside. And that's where your film goes. And then your bellows. Um, I've also often thought about, like, how could I turn this into, like, a crazy pinhole camera? Or just even a camera that I could use um, without having... It's got all the mechanisms and components of what you need to, to make a camera work. Um... But I, yeah, I got too many cameras, too much, too much other things going on. So, but back to the film on this thing. You can still buy some, uh, some old stock on it from a lot of reputable places. There's really good places in Dallas that have a whole bunch of this old stock, uh, black and white, which is really cool looking in this color and things like that. But you're looking at like five bucks a shot. I mean, once you start spending the money on that film, they're proud of it. Um, that's a lot of money for a shot. Uh, later later films or, or videos from now I'm going to talk to you about large format um, and shooting on a 4x5 negative and the cost and things like that associated to that and this is still significantly more expensive than shooting with that and that's just right out of the box so these are cool they always you know they always attract a lot of attention people always want to I'll be honest with you people really they try to give me these all the time this is somebody's family heirloom. They found this thing in their house and their great aunt Susan used to love it and, and take pictures with it or their grandfather or whoever collapses down. And they're like, here, take this camera and you know, you'll you'll figure out how to use it. You can, it's Polaroid. It's Polaroid. You can get Polaroid film, right? You, you for this thing. No, no. No film for this thing. So it's neat. It's a cool conversation piece. Um, it's pretty much a boat anchor. Uh, there's zero value in them on eBay. There's zero value in the aftermarket stuff that you attack my bugs here. Uh, there's really zero value on these things. I hate to throw it away because it's just kind of cool, but this one plus three or four other ones I have on a shelf in my office where I keep all my cameras, it's just taking up a lot of room. So. This one may find its way to another home. I may see if somebody just wants it really bad and thinks it's cool and wants to put it on a shelf. That's that's about all it's good for. So, anyways, not a super exciting camera. Sorry to get your hopes up tonight, but I got some more cool cameras coming up, and uh, I'll probably actually stand out here and make a couple more videos tonight, show those to you. And uh, but again, Polaroid 125 Land camera. You'll see them referred to as land cameras everywhere on the marketplace. If you have one out there, don't spend a dime on it. There's zero return in, on, on your investment because you can't use it. So, again, guys, um, thank you for all the feedback. We've gotten tons of feedback from folks. Uh, good, bad, ugly. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, like the videos, unlike the videos, subscribe to my feed and so forth. Give me a little love there. Um, so I can know what I'm doing right here and uh, I'm not trying to blow this thing up, but I'm trying to blow this thing up. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll get back to you guys in a couple days with more videos.
Go be awesome.